Welcome to the practice exam problems for Computer Science 320, 2014, Winter 2. We're going to start here with problem number two. Problem number one was not really a problem. It was just a description of the practice exam. And this problem is called Clark's, Clark Kent's Glasses. Like all the problem titles, you can feel free to completely ignore that one. So consider these well-known, mostly but not all, NP-complete problems. And there's a big list of problems. You should definitely familiarize yourself with these. Uh, I'll come back through and try and give a, a super short summary of most or all of these problems in a moment. But first, let's figure out what we're going to do with the problems. It says each of the problems below is a disguised version of one of the problems above. And we're going to figure out which of these problems above the problem below is a disguised version of. So basically, we're figuring out for the problem below, uh, what of the problems above is it most similar to. And there is a warning that some of the problems up here could be used multiple times, and some might not be used at all. And indeed, since we don't have nearly enough down below 14 to use everyone above, clearly some of them won't be used. But the warning points out that we could use some more than once as well. Okay, so let's do a really quick review of everything. I am generally going to describe the decision versions of these problems, so the ones whose answer is yes or no, rather than typically the optimization versions of the problems. Uh, some of them don't exactly have optimization versions, but they've still got solutions rather than just yes or no. It's really worth being familiar with both because you usually want to know that optimization version if you're going to prove NP completeness. So I'll give you an example of the optimization version for probably for independent set, uh, and then again maybe for um, Hamiltonian cycle is another good example of that, uh, just because on, on independent set we've got a standard optimization problem. Hamiltonian cycle is less an optimization problem and more just one where there's a solution that we might be interested in besides yes or no. So walking through those then, we'll start with independent set. In independent set you're given a graph and a threshold value k and you want to figure out if there is a set of at least k nodes such that no two of those nodes is connected by an edge in the graph. In set packing, you're given uh, a value n that indicates you have the numbers 1 through n, and you're given a list of sets, and each set contains some, but not necessarily all, of those numbers 1 through n. And finally, you're given a threshold value k, and the question is, can you find um, a, a list of at least k of those sets such that no two of the sets contains the that you've chosen that is contains the same element so you can continue pack in at least k sets that don't overlap vertex cover you're given a graph and a threshold value k and you want to know no can you choose at most k of the nodes uh, notice that this isn't an at least problem, this is an at most problem. So at most k of the nodes, such that every edge in the graph has one of those nodes, maybe two, incident on it. So you've chosen at least one of the nodes on either end of any edge. Set cover, like vertex cover, is going to be an at most k problem. Uh, but like set packing, we're given a number, it means we've got the numbers 1 through n, and we're given a list of sets. Each set contains some of, but not necessarily all of, those numbers. And our question is, can we choose at most k of the sets such that every number appears in one of the sets? And notice in this case, it can appear in more than one of the sets. That's totally fine. But it has to appear in at least one. A 3D matching, by the way, is a problem that, as we discussed, we are not going to cover on the exam. Uh, sorry to put it on here. Um, it is actually an answer that we will be using on the practice exam, but I promise you we won't be using it on the exam. Just to give a really brief summary, you're given a number n, you've got three sets of items, each with size n, and then you're given a list of candidate matchings. Uh, so each candidate matching is going to say, uh, you know, it's like number three from the first set, number one from the second set, and number seven from the third set would be a candidate matching. You get a list of a bunch of these, and the question is, can you choose a subset of those candidates? matchings so that every single item in all three sets is in exactly one matching. So it feels a little bit like stable marriage except instead of having preferences we have these candidate matchings and we're only allowed to choose a candidate matching and instead of having two uh, sets of things, men and women, we have three sets of things, whatever you want to imagine those might be. Graph coloring, back to problems that we definitely want to know about. You are given a graph, 
Uh, by the way, so far I've just said given a graph. Uh, typically when I say that, I mean undirected and unweighted. I will mention if it's directed or weighted. So you're given a graph and you're given a, a value k. k is the number of colors you have available. So colors like red, blue, green, so on and so forth. You can also just think of them as numbers if you want and label nodes with numbers. And your job is to figure out if you can assign a color to each node such that no two nodes with an edge between them have the same color. In Hamiltonian cycle, you are given a graph and a, uh, I was going to say a starting point. Actually, it doesn't really matter if you're given a starting point because we're going to make a cycle that includes every node in the graph. So we could start at whatever node we want. So never mind that. You're given a graph. And the question is, is there a simple cycle in the graph that contains every node? So in other words, can you start at some node, visit every single other node, and come back to that node without visiting any other node twice and without visiting that starting node more than twice? Okay. So it's a simple cycle in the sense that it doesn't intersect itself, and the only point where it cycles around is from the start point all the way back around to the end point. Hamiltonian path, you are given a graph, and unlike cycle, you're given a start point and an end point. We usually call those S and T, but it doesn't really matter. S is the start point, T is the end point, and the question is, is there a simple path from S to T through the graph that visits every node in the graph? Okay, so unlike Hamiltonian cycle, we're not at the very end going to come back to the starting point. We're just going to start from S and end up at T. Traveling salesman is also a little bit like Hamiltonian cycle and Hamiltonian path. In traveling salesman, you are given a weighted graph. So there are weights on the edges. And the, the question is from some starting point. Again, sometimes you're given a starting point in traveling salesperson, but it actually doesn't really matter. So starting at some node in the graph, can you visit all of the other nodes in the graph, come back to the starting node, spending at most a total cost k, which you are also given. Okay, so you have to spend no more than that threshold cost that you're given at the start. Uh, it is usually assumed that the graph in Traveling Salesman is complete, that is, there is an edge between every pair of nodes. That's not really necessary, uh, so you could make the edge weight infinite, and then there effectively isn't an edge between two nodes. Or given that you, you have the threshold k, if you make the edge weight k plus 1, then clearly you can never use that edge anyway. Uh, so you, you, can, you can effectively have an incomplete graph, but we usually assume a complete graph. Subset sum is a really simple one. You're given a list of numbers. We could even say a list of integers. And you're given a target number, w. And the question is, is there a subset of the given numbers that adds up to exactly w? Knapsack is sort of a more complex version of subset sum. You are given a list of objects. Each object has a weight and a value. And those are independent, so something could be very light and very valuable, or very heavy and very valuable, or very heavy and very cheap, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you're given a list of objects. Each object has a weight and a value. You are given a weight limit. You cannot carry more than that weight. And you are given a threshold value. And you want to figure out, can you pick up items respecting your weight limit that have at least that value? Stable marriage sorting and minimum spanning tree are not NP-complete problems. They are all NP. That is, we have discussed polynomial time solutions for all of them. Uh, in stable marriage, you are given uh, number n, and there are n men and n women. For each man, you are given a complete preference list over all of the women. For each woman, you are given a complete preference list over all of the men. And the problem is to produce a matching of the men and women that uh, such that there are no instabilities. Uh, in the matching. So there's, it's never the case that uh, there are a pair of men and women uh, that are married, so two men, two women. Uh, the first man is married to the first woman, the second man is married to the second woman, such that uh, the first man prefers the second woman to the woman he's married to, and the second woman prefers the first man to the man she is married to. In other words, they'd rather run off with each other than stay with their spouses. So there can't be any instabilities in the matching produced. In sorting, you're given a list of elements, and you're given some means of comparing those elements. 
and uh, so testing whether one element is less than another element and you're supposed to produce a list that contains exactly the same elements but is in sorted order according to that comparator. Oh, by the way, I should mention stable marriage and sorting obviously are not decision problems. We could create decision problem versions of them, but we haven't bothered to. Minimum spanning tree, you are given a weighted graph and your job is to produce a tree that is a, a subgraph of that graph of minimum weight that connects all of the nodes in the graph. So it's a little bit like the Steiner tree problem that we discussed, but you actually have to connect all the nodes, whereas in the Steiner tree problem, you are given a subset of the nodes that you have to connect. And it's kind of funny that that problem, where you only have to connect a subset, is harder than this problem. Okay, and I mentioned I would talk about optimization versions and not just about decision versions for independent set. Uh, and for Hamiltonian cycle, it's not exactly an optimization problem. So for independent set, remember the decision version, you're given a threshold and you're asked, is there a set at least that large such that no two nodes have an edge between them? The optimization version is, is kind of the obvious generalization of that. You don't just want to be at least as large as K, you want to be as large as possible. So you just want to give as large a set as possible such that no set of nodes, such that no two nodes in the set have an edge between them. In Hamiltonian cycle, it's not exactly an optimization problem. Instead, we asked before, remember, is there a cycle in the graph that visits every node, a simple cycle? And the solution version of the problem is give the cycle that visits every node in the graph. So actually list out, start with some node, and then make a list of all of the other nodes, and then end with that node again, and ensure that that's a simple cycle. That is, there's an edge between each pair of nodes, consecutive nodes, in the list.